attempting something new. We televised about this before, but today, thanks to an airborne relay transmitter, we're taking you on board the BBC launch to give you as good a view as that of the judges themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of the Autogyro Eureka, over to the launch consuta. Identical strokes, 33 for Oxford and for Cambridge. They're uh, keeping up the well, keeping the stroke well up in this race. It hasn't dropped as far as we can tell at the moment below 32. Oxford are putting on 10. The Oxford here have the advantage of the bend. We can see Barnes right ahead. And Oxford are increasing their lead. They've picked up the stroke. They've increased their stroke and are now coming right, right close into the Middlesex bank and increasing their lead up to about three quarters of a length. Pressure and sunshine were oysters, winkles, welks and cockles are in great demand. And down at the seaside here, they're taking health and beauty very seriously. Why it's fallen to my lot to express an opinion as to which of these lovely girls is the most graceful and beautiful is really beyond my comprehension. But if it forms an excuse for me to travel around the south coast with them, I've certainly no complaints to make, and neither, I think, is the crew of number 14 mobile television unit, which is sending these pictures to you. Good, that's his fifth. Bring the total up to 141. Still with only two wickets down and with both batsmen now well set, nicely. Oh, pretty shot, sir. The crowd's getting really good value for its money at launch today. It's seeing bright cricket at its very best. You can see, by the way, the umpire's coats blowing about, but there's a breeze which certainly is very welcome to the fielders on this hot afternoon. Oh, there's no run there. There's one here, I think. Oh, well done. Now watch carefully the way he tackles this left-handed bowler. First of all, note the respect with which he treats it. Relay. Although you break the ice in your sympathy each winter, you don't get numberless Englishmen diving off London Bridge into your river. But these Frenchmen and their fathers and grandfathers before them have been jumping off this same bridge on this same anniversary for years past. Yes, we're leaving the American network in 30 seconds. Follows Martin in the batting order of the Cardinals. He steps up there now batting left. The Kevin Martin on first. A run in. Two out. Here's the pitch. A ball. High and outside to left-handed batter. Ball one is the count. Two out. And Pepper Martin on first. And a run in. Ten to nothing now favors St. Louis. A fly over at first. But Pepper is back there. He's put up against the bag. Run will win. Two on. Two out. Perry up there batting for Jackson. He's back to pot and hard. The Roacher pulls it out of the dirt and tosses over to Mays for the final out. Yes, sir, the Giants lose the ball game, Gordon, to the Cardinals, four to two. And with that, we return British viewers in the Yankee Stadium, New York City, to the BBC television studios in London, England. America going out. Queuing Studio A. Well, the beauty of that little daydream is that nobody can contradict it yet. In this film, we've tried to show you what television offers you. You have seen a costume play and a modern thriller. We have visited a theater and looked at some of our favorite sports. We have caught a glimpse of a variety of other types of television programs. And we hope that we've succeeded in persuading some of you to give television a trial in your own homes. If we have, you will be interested in some of the programs now being prepared for you. From 8.30 to 9, and again from 9.30 to 10.15, on Monday the 14th of October, the mobile television cameras will be at the Municipal Hall Tottenham for our first post-war open boxing tournament. You will see several ABA champions fighting in a program arranged by the Langham Boxing Club under the auspices of the Amateur Boxing Association.
During the afternoon of Saturday, the 12th of October, the mobile television unit will pay its first post-war visit to a race course. It will be at Ascot to bring you the inauguration of the King George VI Stakes, a new race to be run over two miles. Both the start and finish will be close to our television cameras. To those who enjoyed the television visit to the Hammersmith Palais last July, it will be good news that television will be visiting a dance hall again during the evening of the 7th of October. On that date, the mobile unit will be at Hornsey Town Hall to enable you to attend one of the old-time dances, which are a regular feature in Hornsey. You will see such Victorian measures as the Lancers, the Cotillion, the Cavart, and the Barn Dance, and, of course, the Polka and the Valita. September the 15th is being kept as Battle of Britain Sunday. And on that afternoon, it is appropriate that we should be taking you over to the Royal Air Force Station at Biggin Hill in Kent. Biggin Hill, which during the war was a sector station in number 11 Group Fighter Command, provided, you will remember, the cornerstone for the defence of London. And in the afternoon in question, viewers will attend a brief service in the station chapel, which is dedicated to the memory of the few. And afterwards, they will take their places opposite the saluting base to watch the ceremonial of the march past which will follow. The date, the 15th of July, the time, half past eight, the television camera rendezvous, the Garrick Theatre, the show, Better Late, with Beatrice Lilly and Walter Chrisham. And so, ladies and gentlemen, ends this film transmission from the BBC television station at Alexandra Palace. We shall be on the air again at the advertised time. Until then, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>